Alliance Fareed Zakaria, host of Fareed Zakaria GPS, um, is grieving the loss of his mum to COVID-19 related issues. Uh, joining me now, and I do want to begin with my condolences, Fareed. I know you lost your mum in, in India earlier this year. Um, what you. is going on there is, is, is very real and very personal for you. I just want your sense on what has gone wrong. Oh, I think it's a complicated question, um, and there isn't a mm. simple answer. But I think it's fair to say that uh, the government, uh, Prime Minister Modi, uh, initially overreacted, uh, by which I mean the, the initial lockdown was too harsh, too cruel, uh, too complete, particularly when COVID was not yet uh, spreading that wildly in India. Uh, and perhaps as a consequence of that, uh, he took all his his foot off the pedal very quickly. Uh, but the real mistake, if there is a lesson to be drawn from this, was the extraordinary hubris that you mentioned that developed after that. Uh, the Indian government declaring victory much too soon, deciding that Indians were perhaps exceptional in having some kind of natural immunity uh, from COVID, and most crucially, deciding to then not only celebrate uh, but also to allow massive uh, gatherings, political gatherings, political rallies. But once you do that, remember, India is a democracy with the rule of law, and so that then becomes impossible to, to shut down other kinds of gatherings, cricket matches, uh, the religious festivals like the Kumbh Mela. So all of that created a kind of out-of-control situation. Now, you add to this the fact that the Indian government, in India, is, what characterizes India, as everyone knows, is a dynamic, flourishing, energetic private sector and a dysfunctional, corrupt, weak public sector. And so here, in a public health crisis, the public sector has to perform. Uh, and it simply did not, it perhaps cannot, but it has certainly not been well led by Prime Minister Modi. So at the end of the day, I'm glad that uh, the government is taking responsibility, but they need to do more than take responsibility. I mean, frankly, people should be fired. New people should be put in place. Mm. They need a national strategic plan. None of this is happening. It's episodic. It's ad hoc. Uh, it remains still a situation where you have chaos in India and the government is in shambles. I want to take our viewers back uh, to March of 20. 20, March the 24th, in fact, India's Prime Minister, as you rightly pointing out, ordered all 1.3 billion people in the country to stay at home for three weeks. Let's just listen to him speaking to the nation. To save the country, to save every citizen of India, to save you, to save your family members. From midnight, there will be a complete ban on moving out of your homes. Every street, every district, every lane, every village will be under lockdown. It was, free the biggest, and as I understand it, the most severe action undertaken anywhere to stop the spread of COVID. For the hundreds of millions who live below the poverty line, for those who live hand to mouth, uh, the impact was devastating. We remember uh, the images of people leaving the urban areas and drifting home with their, uh, oftentimes with their goods on their heads. I mean, it was, it was uh, sort of, it was apocalyptic to a certain extent, but it did work. What you're saying is that even if the government were to lock down across the board on a nationwide basis again. You're saying that wouldn't work again, correct? The impact, the, the economic impact would just be too much for so many people who are living in a nigh on destitute state anyway, they must work. Well, how, you're exactly right. For having botched the first lockdown, the memories mm. are so bad that it would be impossible to do a second. The first lockdown, as you say, as you pointed out, was utterly draconian, the, the most draconian in the world. Most pharmacies shut down. In fact, all pharmacies sh shut down because the government didn't distinguish for a while as to what could stay open. Grocery stores shut down. And, of course, 
over 50 to 100 million migrant workers were trapped in the places they were. So the whole thing was a fiasco. It should have been telegraphed. They should have said, you know, you've got four days or something like that. They should have made clear what was open, what was not. But most importantly, Becky, India is a poor country. It does not have money for COVID relief. If you don't have money for COVID relief, you have to be very careful with how you do a lockdown. Finally, at this point, not only would the lockdown not be adhered to, uh, the, the situation is so out of control, uh, it's not clear that you would be able to manage one. And particularly in places like the slums of Mumbai or you know slums of Calcutta, uh, you, you have population densities that are 30 to 50 times higher than that of Western cities. Uh, telling people who live 15 people in two rooms that they have to stay <laughs> stay indoors isn't exactly going to stop spread. Um, we spoke to one journalist um, who actually penned an op-ed uh, for CNN, and part of in part of that, in part, she wrote, "In India, no one has apologized, no one has resigned, nothing has changed." except the increasing numbers of cases and f fatalities. What about some accountability at this point, Fareed? I think it's a very good point, and I would point out, unfortunately, when you go back to a few months ago when the Indian government was declaring victory, um, in the Indian media was largely complicit. Uh, under Modi, the Indian media has collapsed. I, I think it would be fair to say that India no longer has a real free press in the sense it has historically had one. Most of the television media, the local television media, is slavishly pro-government, uh, acting as cheerleaders for, uh, for Prime Minister Modi. The few that are not are persecuted and hounded with uh, all kinds of, uh, you know, tax cases and such. Uh, they have, they have and, and in that atmosphere, with no independent media, with no eyes on the government with no accountability, the government has felt very little pressure to do uh, to do much. And in fact, to the extent it has done things, uh, it has essentially assumed greater and greater powers for itself, which have further curtailed the independence of the media. The government is now taking down Twitter accounts, uh, asking Twitter to delete tweets. Same with Facebook. The social media companies are obliging. So. What you are seeing is as the crisis gets worse, rather than the government demonstrating greater competence, what it is doing instead is de demonstrating greater authoritarianism. Fareed Zakaria, on the story, Fareed, you will have noted that India's Supreme Court has ordered the government to address the oxygen shortfall uh, by midnight. Um, we await to see uh, what action the government actually takes. Um, and as we pointed out, um, the... Uh, the Indian government has been um, very slow to respond to cr criticism um, in its uh, actions on this latest wave. And we will uh, continue to uh, press for further response from them. Thank you, Fareed.